Hello, welcome back to Statistics and Mathematics YouTube channel. Today we are going to treat what we call normal distribution. If you are new to my channel, please kindly subscribe, like and share so that this video too will get to your friends. They will watch and learn a lot from it. We are starting our studies on normal distribution. Normal distribution is a continuous probability distribution. In fact, we have a lot of continuous probability distribution. We have what we call uniform distribution, we have exponential distribution, we have log gamma distribution, we have beta distribution, we have gamma distribution, we have four ball distribution, and the rest. In fact, there are a lot of normal distribution that we have. But the most popularly used distribution is called normal distribution, which is used for modeling random variables involving measurements such as time, height and weight of what persons, mark scored in examination, amount of rainfall, growth rate, and many other scientific measurements. Before one can be really able to understand normal distribution, one has to be able to understand the probability density function of the distribution. So when we check on the screen, we have a probability density function for normal distribution. So our f of x here is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi sigma squared times e raised to the power negative half x minus me divided by sigma all squared where we are saying that our sigma that is a standard deviation is greater than zero our x lies between negative infinity to positive infinity and then expectation of x is what the mean and variance of x is what sigma squared i would like us to this is what the pdf for um, continuous uh, sorry pdf for normal distribution i want us to graph um, normal distribution so that when we see a graph that we picked a normal distribution we can easily identify sometimes we'll be having a lot we'll be having our graph and then we would like to i mean plot our graph and the, we'll be having our data and then we would like to plot our data and then just see if our data is normally distributed right so if it is normally distributed how would our data look like if it is not and if it doesn't follow a normal distribution how will our data look like so we are going to walk through this one so that i don't believe when we are plotting them purely in some of the software like sbss data r and the rest you will see when our data is what normally distributed so first the graph of normal uh, normal probability distribution is bell shape smooth what curve so in our junior high schools we are all we all were having what bell that we used to have ring and then you see that this is the graph for the normal distribution and this graph is just depicting the math of the bell that we used to rank in our in our basic schools so this data is what a data that represents what normal distribution what sorry this diagram is a diagram that represents normal distribution right so for normal distribution we are, we are saying that the mean mode and median they are all what equal at the what the center right sometimes you will graph a data right and then you could realize that most of the value most of the data falls in what to the right of the mean and most of the data also falls to what to the left of what the mean when it comes this way it means that the data is not normally distributed but right that what skew right so i want us to also go through how a skew diagram will look like so when we get a skew diagram what usually we do about is to transform the data so that the data of what normally distributed so we use what we call some uh, some non-parametric approach to i mean um do that right so we are just saying that when the majority of the data values falls to the right of the mean the distribution is said to be negative or left skew distribution so this is a typical example of what negative or left skew distribution we are just saying that most of the data falls to what the right of the mean so when they come to this way our mean median and mode will never be equal right so once the mean mode and the median are not equal it just turns out that it doesn't follow what a normal distribution secondly when the majority of the data values falls to the left of the distribution it is said to be positive or right skewed distribution so this is how the uh, right skewed distribution look like so here you can see it clearly also that our mean median and the mode are not what equal right so this is when our data is what skew to the left and also skew to what to the right right so i want us to also visit our slice which is prepared by one of our lecturers in the department of statistics and actuarial science master college abate so sir please wherever you, you you hear this my video and my recording i'm just saying hi to you just permit me to use your slides okay 
Thank you. So we'll be using Mr. Collins about this slice to continue the our next lecture. So I want us to also see how the shape of the normal distribution will look like when let's say we have two um, curves and we are just saying that with these two curves our mean for the two curves are equal but the standard deviation is not equal how the curve look like so maybe you can also have when our mean is different and the two standard deviation are equal how will our curve look like right and what about if both our mean and the standard deviation are all equal how will our curve look like so let's visit the slice and then take it out from there so this is the uh, some of the shape of the normal distribution so the first one is that normal distribution with the same mean but with different standard deviation right so we are having curve one and then we are having what we call curve two right so here our u1 and then u2 are equal just then as that the mean for curve one and the mean for curve two right the, the two means are what they are what equal right and then we are just seeing here that our sigma one is greater than sigma two so they just turn out that the standard deviation right for our curve one is greater than the standard deviation for what curve two right so if our mean and variances are equal for these two graphs or for for these two curves we will see that there will be a line passing through both the center of the first curve and the second curve so here it just tells us that this just depends that our u naught, sorry u one here is equal to what u two, right? And then you see when you compare the height of these two curves, right? The height, the two heights are what different, right? So since these two height height are different, we are just saying that our standard deviation for the first curve is greater than our standard deviation for the second curve, right? So both of the standard deviation are not equal. So let's continue. What about when the distribution, when the distribution have different means, but with the same standard deviation, right? If you're having the same standard deviation for the two curves, then it says that the height of both of the curves are going to be what? equal, right? But we'll be having different centers for the curve one and the curve two, right? So here you can see it clearly that our u1 is less than what u2, right? So this is what we have here. So they just depicting clearly that our standard deviation are what equal. That's the reason why we are having the same height, but we are having different uh, mean. That's the reason why we are also having different centers for these two curves. Let's continue. We are, we are also going to we are also having when the mean are different and when the standard deviation two are also what different. When the mean are different, it means that we are going to have two centers. So this will be our first center passing through curve one and this will be our second center passing through what curve two right and both have uh, sorry both of the height height are all what different right so this is how the, the curves also what look like so let's go through some properties of the normal distribution first one is the normal distribution curve is what bell shape that is what we have just discussed so let's move on to the next one the mean median and mode are equal and are located at the center of the distribution as we just discussed that if you are having a typical normal distribution table we will have our center and at the center our mean mode and median are going to what always going to be what equal right the normal distribution curve is unimodal they just tell us that we have only one mode for what the normal distribution the curve is symmetric about the mean. That's the next property. The curve is what? Symmetric about the mean. The fourth one is the curve is continuous, but it never touches what? The x axis. So when you draw a typical normal distribution uh, curve, or when you graph a typical normal distribution curve, we are just saying that uh, the curve is though continuous, but when you draw the curve, it will never touch what? Our x axis. And then we are saying that. The total area under the normal distribution curve is equal to one, right? Or what? Hundred percent. So all the so we know that uh, for this probability distribution, when you sum all the property the the when you sum all the probabilities, right? We are surely going to get one. So that is what the area under the curve for summing all the probabilities. When we come to the uh, 
when you come to the continuous that's the same thing when you integrate the function on its limit well it should give you what one that is just giving you what the area under the curve so here the total area under the curve is what one and then we have what you call the area um, the empirical rule and the area under normal distribution curves right so here we are just saying that the area under the part of normal curve that lies within one standard deviation of mean is approximately 0.68 right so we are just saying that once we have our mean that's the mean at the center when you just move one standard deviation to the left and move one standard deviation to the right plus the mean we are just going to have a probability of what 0.68 or 66 what percent and then if we also have within two standard deviation we are going to have probability of 0.95 and within three standard deviation we are going to have probability of what 0.997 so let's just represent what we have just said in the property uh, six on a graph so this is what we call the empirical rule and area under a normal distribution curve so here we are having a typical normal distribution curve with a bellwood shape right so this is our center right so at this center we are having what we call the beam so we are just saying that if you move if you add um one standard deviation to the right to the mu to the right of the curve and they just subtract one standard deviation to the left from the mean we are just having the probability to go at 68 percent and then if you also move two to if you add two standard deviation to the mean right and then subtract two standard deviation to the mean the probability is we are having 95 percent um, probability right and then the three if you subtract negative three from the mean to the left and then add sorry to the right and then add uh, three standard deviation to the right we are having 99.7 percent uh, right so typically this is how the empirical and then area under a normal distribution curve look like so you can be asked in the exams when we are one standard deviation away from the mean what is the probability right it can go at 68 percent right and then you can ask what a lot of questions on that so we have i have some small question here that i want us to go through right so our first question is just saying find the mean and standard deviation of the following distribution curves so this is what a typical example of what normal distribution and we just know that the mean is always at the center so this is our center and we are going to have what you call 120 to be what our mean i'm coming please give me a minute right so yeah you, you know that our mean our mean will be what 120 since the center of our curve is what this one right and then we have been asked to find the standard deviation and then we too, you know that if, if you have our mu if you add one standard deviation to the left and then add one sta subtract sorry one standard deviation to the right and then subtract uh, our standard deviation from the mean to what uh, to the left right we are going to have some probability for this and the probability is what 68 percent right so when you come here see that there was 20 added to 120 to get 140 and at the same time there was 20 subtracted from 120 to get what 100 so you could see clearly that our sigma our sigma is the standard deviation is for 20 right so when you compare our answer we are just getting it here right we are getting 120 and what 20 and this one too our mean is what 30 and our standard deviation right is going to be 5 since from the uh, sorry from the 30 year there was 5 added to 30 to get 35 and it was 5 subtracted from 30 to get to 25 it's just telling us clearly that our standard deviation here too is what 5 right so let's check the answer right let's just check what our answer so when we check our answer we are supposed to get yes this is for the c right so when we come to the c you are getting 5 and then what 30 right so this is our answer this is what b so let's solve for the b right so for our b we know that our mean will be what 150 uh, sorry our mean will be 15 and then we just add 100 uh, 2.5 to 15 to get what 17.5 and subtract 2.5 from 9, uh, 15 
to get 12.5 so here our standard deviation tool will be 2.5 so as it has been uh, given to us here so typically this is what a short introduction that i can give you on normal distribution now next video we are just going to treat the standard normal distribution so please if you haven't subscribed subscribe like and share so that this video will get viral for people to also watch thank you for visiting my channel bye bye